Okay, so um, I fixed one last night, and uh, uh, and then I'm going to fix another one uh, tonight. So here's what I had to work with <clears throat> right here. So this is one of the ones that was damaged. So you can see the the center hub was knocked out of this thing, uh, and it's in uh, it's in pretty bad shape right now. I thought about making some new ones, but uh, these old school ones, uh, cast iron ones, are pretty sweet. And um, and this particular one has a, a a little gear drive on the back side that runs a counter, uh, a Vita root counter that's on the uh, that's on the jig bore. Uh, so I wanted to retain all that, uh, and I had a good way to put them back together, which I'll explain in a second. So the the tricky parts here is. You know, obviously this thing's blown out of the middle here and it's pretty pretty jacked up. Um, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the axis of the shaft and the wheel are concentric and kind of square with each other. So uh, I'm going, geez, how do I do that? I really need some kind of a fixture. Now this, I probably should have done them in opposite direction, opposite uh, order, but uh, I didn't. And there was a reason for the way I did it, but I'll tell you that in a sec. Uh, this one was blown into like f six pieces here. Uh, this was separate, that was separate, this was taken out. Um, the, uh, and so I had to get it kind of patch it all back together. Uh, this one is slightly smaller in diameter than this one. Okay, so what I did, what I did is I created a, kind of a, a, a simple fixture here to kind of keep things, keep things lined up. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's a there's a pen, there's a, the hole and then there's a pencil line. So this inner hole corresponds to this this smaller diameter here right now. And then once I'm done with this one, which I'm done with now, what I'll do is I'll take this back off and go to the bandsaw and I'll cut that out and then it'll fit this one. Fortunately, they have the same uh, shaft size, which is this five eighths right here. Uh, and so that keeps me uh, straight with the world, and uh, this is my reference plane right here. So I'll put this one on, and you can kind of you can kind of see how they uh, how they go in here. So you can see how that fits in here, and then I can squeeze this down, and then I just got some uh, drywall screws here that I drove in once it was all tight and centered up, and that kind of kept the pieces together, um, so I could get them all tacked up and uh, and uh, and welded. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that was my little fixture. Now the welding; these are cast iron handles, uh, chrome plated to boot. Um, so, or maybe nickel plated. Um, anyway, so cast iron has its own little set of problems uh, when you're welding it. Uh, what I was, what I'm using here is this uh, nickel rod 99. So it's basically pure nickel, uh, or almost pure nickel, and it's for TIG welding uh, uh, cast iron. Actually works really good. Uh, I've used it in the past. Don't do a lot of cast iron repairs, but this was uh, this is a really good candidate for uh, for doing that. Um, the other thing you have to do with cast iron is you can see here. I don't know if you can see that, but this is kind of dirty, um, and uh, you know it might have had oil on it or something like that. So you got to kind of clean it, and you got to bevel these edges and uh, and get some um, some weld prep on them. So what I did on this one, um, let's see which way does that go, Just like that. Uh, what I did on this one is I, I used a, uh, a grinder with a cutting disc and the areas that I could access while it was in the fixture, I kind of V'd those with the grinding disc and so I could get some tack welds on it. And then as I worked my way around, I just kind of went around with the V with the grinder and then, uh, and then backfilled it with weld. Um, my wife wants me to fill all this up and then blend it so you can't see it. Uh, and I'm like, that's a lot of work. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, and, you know, the results are, uh, um, you know, it's a lot of work for minimal results. Right now the, the welds are, uh, are fairly neat here uh, and not too offensive looking. It's not like the seagull ran over the top of this. So uh, I think I'll just kind of take the bumps off and uh, and leave it as is. I'm not trying to hide any repair work or anything like that. Um, um, to me, it was important to have the original wheels on there, even if they were busted. 
um, and you know it's chrome plated or nickel plated, so it'd be hard to match that up at, uh, and make it invisible anyway. So I'm not going to bother. Uh, I want to just use the machine and uh, I want to try it out anyway. It's kind of a unique machine and uh, see if I can use it in the shop and if I want to keep it or not. So that's kind of the goal with that machine. So anyway, that one's kind of done. I do have to uh, uh, insert this, uh, uh, the handle back in here. And so I got a little cleanup to do on that. And then uh, uh, I'll probably press that back in there. It's a non-rotating handle uh, for whatever reason. I don't know why they didn't make a rotating one. Uh, doesn't really matter too much. Um, it almost goes now, but I'll get it up on the mill and clean that hole out a little bit and then press it back in there. So that's that one. <coughs> Set that one aside and then take a look at this one here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, all you guys have seen somebody bandsaw something that's pretty boring. So I'm going to go fix this fixture up and get this kind of all set up and then uh, I'll come back and um, I'll shoot some more video and uh, you can see some of the repairs. Okay, cool.